Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. I'm Warren Bernard. And we're taking a look at uh, Matt, Matt Groening slinging some hash, man, for, for Apple Computer and the Macintosh in specific. Uh, before we get into things, though, I want to invite everybody to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to notify you whenever we have new videos available because that helps mitigate the, uh, the, K, the Kayfabe effect, which is whenever we talk about something... Uh, comic book or whatever it seems to disappear off the shelves in comic stores it disappears off of ebay it disappears off of amazon what are you looking for jim i was gonna pull out WYSIWYG. that's your WYSIWYG. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry to distract you yeah and this little manual uh the student's guide that we're going to be talking about is a is a pretty pretty uh rare and expensive uh art, artifact in general but also, uh, if you watch these videos to the end, that gooses the YouTube algorithm and pushes our video out to uh, YouTube viewers who also like comics, but who are unaware of uh, the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Helps out the channel, helps grow the army. Uh, Uncle Warren. Yes. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for bringing this on by. This is kind of like a legendary piece. If you read the, uh, the uh, bi- biographies of Apple Computer and, and stuff like the Matt Groening, Life in Hell artist who then created a, a little show called The Simpsons. The Simpsons. Well, and it was the and this is 1989. Yeah. And that was the same year that The Simpsons started in the Tracy Ullman show. Well, the, they started in the Tracy Ullman show, I think, earlier. The first episode of the actual Simpsons cartoon was, was uh, 1989. Was, was that, that's right. Yeah, because Tracy Ullman was like a year or two earlier, and there were only like 30-second or 60-second right. cartoons at the time, because I was watching it. Yeah. And I was like, wow, those are really great. And, and so people that no one understands, so this was um life in hell uh which one day we will we will do on a separate show yeah absolutely and, and talk man. about that so These this are... was in uh uh um old weekly newspapers it started out LA weekly and um the the DC city paper had it the Baltimore city paper had it yeah the big cities had that stuff it started right. in about 1982 yeah really establishes footing like in in those spaces and became kind of an institution uh of of these spaces like he was Kind of. Well, he had his own syndicate. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay, all right. And when when we do the show, I'll bring stuff from the syndicate. But he established his own syndicate. And would this be with like Linda Barry? L- Linda Barry was part of it, but he had a set. He had a separate team whose sole job it was to hustle life and health to newspapers. That's fascinating. So See, had... there's there's all this stuff. He he has some kayfabe in in his in his life story and, yes. and, and stuff like that. And uh, it all. Uh, it always gets dispelled when I when I talk uh, to other cartoonists who were like around in that era. Like one of the famous he s- stories he talks about is going to, uh, I think the name of the shop was Licorice Pizza, uh, where he's doing some some signing or something, and the uh, Hernandez brothers are there, and he's talking about how nobody's there to see him. They're all there to see the Hernandez brothers. Jaime Hernandez is like. That story is such bullshit. <laughs> Me and Gilbert were sitting there. We didn't talk to almost anybody, and his line was freaking out the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was. It's it's you know it's hard to explain to people how big life in hell was as a pop culture thing in the eighties and nineties in the old weekly newspaper world. And it's one of those things too, like to be positioned in an LA weekly where. Jim Brooks and you know Hollywood right. executives are are reading this right. or seeing it are laughing at it. Uh, you know, just take a quick glance real quick because it's it's kind of beyond comics. It's 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 about the idea more than it is specifically the cartooning. It it doesn't abide by, you know, comic strip. Well, but but it's all political well, not political, but there's some politics in it, but it's also mainly social commentary. Yeah, yeah, okay? absolutely. And so uh it's it's absolutely brilliant stuff and you can just see flipping through the pages, he he was very innovative in terms of, well, how many panels this time? Do I need any panels? Do I want any panels? One big one, one small one, you know. The the idea is is the thing. The idea is the thing, right, exactly. So, well, we, we'll we'll do a whole show on that. Yeah, okay. yeah, but you could just see that they're abiding by the same format uh, in this student's guide, which was a big deal for Apple Computer. Uh, they They made a lot of money. Uh, by doing like academic consortiums and getting right. colleges, I was going to say like 
you know, first 50 buyers get a free right. T-shirt. First, first 150, 150 get, a poster. Okay, get a poster. This is college, like college recruitment shit. Yes, you know, right. this is the stuff of signing up for uh, bad credit cards on campuses. Well, it says some. It says um, in what will surely be the easiest test of your intellect this term. Apple invites you to try winning a free Apple Macintosh plus personal computer by merely finding it in this drawing. <laughs> right, and it's not its not okay. really a Where's Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll even give you a hint. It's not on the table, the lamp, or the chair. Now you're on your own. To register, look for the contest details where Macintosh computers are sold on your campus. Oh, all right, we'll give you a hint for that too. Look at the bottom of this ad. But do it really, really fast, because only one Macintosh is being given away on this campus, and it's going to happen soon. Soon isn't right away, pronto, quick-like, but hey, you can take a hint. And so this is for the microcomputer support lab, and I don't know what campus this is. I think it's New York. And, um, yeah, so you had giveaways. And, by the way, the poster these days, I've seen three, four, five hundred dollars just for the poster, which, uh, which I've, I don't have. And, th- and this is the poster? No, the poster was a different image. Okay, okay, cool. And that image is probably floating on the screen right now. So it's easily to find. This contest is circle that computer and mail this in. Yeah. Basically, give us your address is yeah, what this all. contest is. That's Man, all. we see that again and again everywhere, how valuable those addresses are. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's everything. So, and uh, in association with that, he did this He did this booklet. So shall we go through the booklet? Yeah, let's just take a, take a quick look, man. And there's a, our premier figure of Bongo, I believe. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make. Ed Piskor and Jim Rugg are Eisner Award-winning cartoonists who are applying all of the stuff that they're learning from the comics they check out on Cartoonist Kayfabe to their own craft. Uh, right now, today, uh, the new works by me, Ed Piskor, are uh, the... Red Room series of comics. The Anti-Social Network is a trade paperback that collects the 2021 season of Red Room material. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the Red Room series. And the current season of comics is called Trigger Warnings. In March, uh, the Red Room Trigger Warnings issue number one saw the light of day. Uh, Every issue is completely self-contained and forthcoming on a monthly basis will be further issues. This is the cover you want to look for. Uh, when you hit the comic book shops in April, you could see due to paper shortages and print delays, we were not allowed to uh, change our files. So disregard that January uh, statement right there. April comes, Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue number two. Uh, In the bibliography, Rising Tide Raises All Ships. Here are some other books in my bibliography that you could get your hands on that are still in print. WYSIWYG, Portrait of a Serial Hacker. X-Men Grand Design, three volumes of that, and Hip-Hop Family Tree, four volumes of this comic, are uh, freshly in print. It was out of print for a little while, but thanks to uh, the cartoonist Kayfabe audience, we rushed this sucker back to print. Coming March 30th, uh, Hulk Grand Design Monster, and in April, Hulk Grand Design Madness, where Jimmy has taken the entire history of the Incredible Hulk and distilling it down into two 40-page volumes of Grand Design Comics. These are some of the other variant comic covers that you're going to be able to find on the racks. The Ed Piscor variant, Peach Momoko, Marcos Martin for that first issue of Hulk Grand Design. And for Madness, got that Jeff Darrow cover, Ed McGinnis. The books that Jim has currently in print, Plain Janes, and Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Uh, scoop these comics up. We love seeing these numbers rise on the Amazon rankings, and we love hearing from the publishers that we have to go back to press. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. All right, so uh, it's every other page. Let me center this better. There we go. Um, so here it is. Th- these are the different kinds of students you're going to find on campus, and then why they should go ahead and get their Mac. Such Genius. a smart concept. Genius. Yeah. Keep rocking, man. So got you've, got, you've got stressed... <laughs> also, the typography is that Apple Garamond font from, from that period. Clueless? What do you mean, Clueless? I haven't got the foggiest idea what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> Boy, and these are relative... Like, like these comics are simple. You know, yeah. this, yes. this probably yeah. paid great and was not the most uh, demanding job. His, his lettering is as iconic as any cartoonist's lettering. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, you could say there's a grainy font. Yeah. No sense. That's gorgeous. Around. What a drawing. 
Yeah, so the, this whole this whole thing, and then some of the text is 3 a.m., do you know where your brain is? One minute you're in Rome formulating an insightful analysis in the rise and fall of the empire, and next Wall Street tracing, the, you know, so they, they, they try to be very, very hip with what's going on here. I was, I was this guy. Okay. I, I always uh, marvel at the procrastinator, and not the one that, that doesn't, like, get nothing, the, the one who gets nothing done, but I'm fascinated by the people who do great work but they can't sit down and do it until, like, the last minute. Walt Simonson in our shooting reviews where he's talking about, like, you know, fucking off for three weeks out of a month and then drawing a Thor comic that last <laughs> right. week. That's, that's, fasc- that's fascinating psychology to me. Well, but with me... He doesn't look like he's getting anything done, though. No. Well, I, I, I didn't, so <laughs> it severely impacted my grade point average. <laughs> Your paper was on Nitschke or was it Nixon? <laughs> The imperfectionist traits avoid clutter collector don't get caught in his wake we know we know what his mac desktop looks like probably <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and, and these things you, you gotta understand that to do this kind of stuff was just like so out there at this time that, okay? that, that apple laser writer is what sold macintoshes and stuff like that man to, to like have something that spits out a piece of paper with like precision and like Different point size fonts, ch- charts, and graphs. Oh yeah, this and it doesn't have the the dot matrix. Very easy to take this up. for granted today, right? And, uh, revolutionary but, that you could do that at home. That's yeah. the desktop publishing revolution, right there. Right, exactly. We, we had the computer labs in in school, and the only reason we had Macintoshes was because this guy uh, Billy Campbell, who went to school in Homestead, was a very early Apple employee, and so he gifted a, a bunch, like a, a lab, a, a lab to to our high school. But there was like many like dot matrix printers and like one laser and we would all fight for the laser to, to like print, <laughs> print our stuff on well and and also at this time the old weekly um the old weekly newspapers were also going to um digital yeah okay and use utilizing mac products to go ahead and do all the last stuff because at you know up until this stuff came along as you know they were cutting things with scissors and pasting them with Wax, you know, wax, and they, they were you know different kinds. Of, you know, the color separations were being done by hand, and as you know, all that stuff was like really super labor labor intensive. So th- this was um, and expensive, and, and right, and expensive, and time consuming. This was the other thing. I remember like my first design job. They were like, it's three hundred dollars or something to change a comma. You know, before yeah. <laughs> before you were doing it yourself in office, it it, it it changed everything. Right. So so you know, people have to understand what these computers meant for that day. All right. So there's the imperfectionist, and then you get oh yes, oh I was also the overwhelmed. So <laughs> I was like at least a couple of these. I love this traits: high pitched squeals of desperation, constant haunted look, warning, love life non existent. <laughs> Man, how well does this age that the that the cartoonist you you know you could hire anybody in 1989 and you choose graining like it's yeah. genius. Think about where Max and Apple are today, and it's like yeah. where's graining? It's the same deal. Like you right. almost couldn't have found a, a guy that would be a better person to pair with for 30 years. Well, you, and right? also even for the, the 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 simplicity of all this, these are the traits. These traits have not changed. Sure. Okay. Sure. So it's a stand-up comics uh, observational skills. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I was that too. Yeah, I was always that. <laughs> yeah. I think this this is probably the Scully era of uh, of Apple. Like, this is not a Steve Jobs decision. I don't think he's he, he's out. He's at next computer at this point. Yes, right. There, yeah, there he were was a couple, at next around. There this were time. there were a couple other CEOs after after Scully also as things were kind of plummeting and tanking at at the company. So this isn't a hip Steve Jobs choice. But this, I would right. say that this still is a vestige of. The Steve Jobs culture that was brought in with like the Rid- Ridley Scott 1984 oh, commercial, yeah. the commercial and, and, the, and right. the hipness of that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, the Pacific Northwest, right? Didn't all those guys come out of that area? Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, this is Alo- Palo Alto. I mean, um, so and here, by the way, the unemployed, they're saying, oh, you can type your own resume. You don't need to, you know, you have to, you have to send it off to somebody to get it typed up. Wow, can you imagine? All right, S- same thing with doing papers. My my friend's mother, her she earned money by typing up people's master thesis. Wow! All right, because she knew how to put, she knew all of the the, the tabs and the tabs shit. and you know all of that stuff, and that that's how she would make that's you know she made it a little extra money. The husband was a was a fireman, so these things to be able to do this on your own 
was revolutionary in that respect, but it also did put some people out of business. So <laughs> And they're also burying the lead because it's not it's not that simple. You gotta set your tabs and know that oh, stuff yeah, sure. and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And also fucking Max crashed every two seconds. I, I still save every couple of minutes be- oh, right. be- because yeah. I used yes. these nineteen eighty four Macs in school and they never gave you credit for like if your thing crashed it's on you it's on you you're supposed to save every two seconds right that's how computers work yeah so oh yeah i'm sorry i was a starving student too so (laughs) (laughs) did i denies making long distance calls yeah right remember that shit That's right. Oh, really? I, I I didn't call California. I used to I used to walk around with a uh, with a calling card. My pa- my parents made me uh, have just in case if I needed to hit them up in an emergency. And then if there is an emergency, now you got to dial maybe twenty six numbers to finally get to to call home for a and, couple and, of cents cheaper. And by the way, so so now catch this. So th- so this is talking about how you can afford uh, a computer. Okay. First place, the very fact you're a student may entitled to discounts on an Apple computer, which which is the one thing they they were good with, to um, giving discounts to teachers and students. Yeah. Okay. But this and second, for those of you who are dying to get your hands on a Mac but don't have quite enough cash, it's a loan your parents can use to purchase a Macintosh computer. And down here, an EDB type says an annual income of at least twenty two thousand five hundred dollars required. So it tells you right there if your parents don't make that tough shit. Yeah. And and there's there's a, always been a premium on Apple products, man. Usually a thousand bucks more expensive than anything else comparable. And then uh, yes, you and of course no, I was definitely not a technoid. Look at that man, shades of uh, Millhouse. Millhouse, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And then here are all the different well, here are all the different models that were available at the time. It's your WYSIWYG model, Ed. That's goddamn right, man. <laughs> and oh, by the way, for those of you who don't know. That's where the disc went, okay? <laughs> and it wasn't a CD, man. We're talking... Uh, it was a floppy. Three, three fives. Yep, it was... Uh, in fact, I worked on some machines that were the the, well, one, the five and a half by five, you know, the yeah. big ones. Um, but yeah, so you, you put your disc in there, and that, that's where the program was, and that, that's where you saved a lot of stuff. And I think uh, one megabyte, that three, that three, three five, if I remember correctly. Oh, the, the, those that was a later one. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah no, the 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 big ones are way smaller. And then uh, here we go. Shows uh, you know the disk drive is probably a big part of you that wants to dabble in a computer's tech specs. So it shows the inside. You know what's funny is uh, one of the innovations of Apple when they were starting in the garage was this is what computers were before Steve Wozniak is Steve Jobs like decided to like put it in a wooden case. But you would just buy these gizmos, have to put your shit together, yes. solder it in there. Right. And then when you got it together, if you got everything correct, there's no coding language. There's nothing built into all of that. And it doesn't necessarily do anything. Fantastic. Right. Right. So there it is. Uh, a nice piece of change that Mr. Greenig. And a pretty rare thing. I've never seen this. Uh, I don't have it. Jimmy doesn't have it. So when you mentioned that you had uh, your, your hands on this sucker, we have to take a look at that. On oh, the absolutely. Channel, and, man. and uh, uh, you know, I... And then, even rarer than this is one of these. Yes. Yeah, that feels like quite a find. Yeah, so that, that was one of those things when it, when it came up. It was like, I had to have it, and uh, it's a piece of... And by the way, this also speaks to people like Greenig also being commercial creators. Oh, okay, yeah. so that they had they it wasn't they weren't just focused on their their comics, which you know today a lot of people that's what they do. But back then, even, you know, going back into the early teens, we we see with Minson McKay from one of the other videos we just did that all these cartoonists went ahead and they was they had commercial accounts. Anytime I have like those old how-to books on cartooning, they yes, always start right. out with like, "This is how this is all the applications," and there's all this kind of stuff: advertising, yeah. art, illustration, commercial applications. Like that was a big chunk of cartooning as a skill, as something that you would learn and actually be able to make a living with. For the independent cartoonist, the actual passion project is just that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make you your money. Even Dan Klaus had to paint those girly ties to make a little extra 
Right. You know what I'm saying? But it would be the commercial work that would facilitate your career. You know, like I would say the first, you know, 10 years of, of, of my career uh, was that, you know, had to do illustration work to subsidize uh, the comic stuff that I really wanted to be doing. But I'm sure Greeny got paid really nicely from Apple for this. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. man. And I'm, I'm sure you got paid way no, way more nice than uh, the, the even... You could be in 30 papers and it didn't pay as good as uh, an Apple ad campaign. That's true. That's true. So there it is. Yes, fantastic. Oh, Warren, man, point people in a direction. Uh, anything you want to promote before we get out of here? Yeah, Small Press Expo, September 17th and 18th, Bethesda, Maryland, www.smallpressexpo.com. Yours truly, besides being a um, slovenly collector, is the executive director. I hope to see everybody there. All right, K-Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jim? Hulk Grand Design, coming to your local comic shop this month and next, retelling the uh, the 60-year history of the Hulk in two oversized epic volumes, over 10,000 pages represented in those. And uh, you can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to see how I make the comics I make. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one is out on the stands today. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. They're going to be coming out on a monthly basis for the uh, foreseeable future. Uh, you can order those comics uh, on online. You could go to your local comic shop, get it put on your pull list, and you could read those comics before they hit paper on my Patreon, patreon.com slash headpiscor. All those links are in my link tree in the description below this video. What else do we have out there, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, give them those marching orders so we could be on our way. Read more comics. <laughs>